the 70s movie called Dogs. Is this about dogs attacking people? Nope, it's a dick measuring contest be among scientists for like an hour and a half. And then there's five minutes of dog attacks. Gerald, I'm Carolyn Donahue of the English department. Hello. Oh, there we go again. Well, it seems our simple handshake has caused an unmanageable surge of electricity. <laughs> what a fascinating theory. But not one that's been fully researched. It's that damned linear accelerator. Some idiot put it on the same power line as the college. A government agency is doing some high-energy particle experiments over there. <gasps> Do you always have this effect in the electricity, Miss Donahue? Mm -hmm. Did you know, Dr. Fitzgerald, that recent discoveries have come up with two new particles, both with the property of strain? The individual ants, incapable of acting as builders by themselves, suddenly create and execute incredibly complex architectural designs. Yes. Does yes. this phenomenon occur in other species? Well, as I said a moment ago, it occurs in many insects, in fish, in birds. There's also scattered evidence that occurs in mammals. The heroes of this movie are the women, because the male scientists in this movie never shot up until a woman's like, literally just says, shut up, nobody cares. They do it constantly. They have no time for this rambling bullshit. All right, now watch. A simple nitrogen compound. If I were to apply it in sufficient quantities, it would smother their olfactory sensors. Thurman information would be blocked, and thus, no more building. Could this theory be applied to human beings as well? Well, we have no evidence of that. Well, might the Thurman reaction become potentially dangerous? Potentially? We can't rule out the possibility. Well, Dr. Aintree, it seems that the physics department has blown it again. Oh. Well, Miss Engel, mm. those hush-hush gentlemen at the accelerator don't consult with me. Besides, I'm a theoretical physicist, not a technician. Well, I should think that that would make you all the more able to avoid uh, draining our entire campus of light at regular intervals, Dr. Aintree. Giant ants and scorpions and lizards are just the product of an ignorant screenwriter who never took biology. Yeah, but they look great. But, Dr. Thompson, aren't there any sort of exceptions in biology? Plants that are animals, unicellular structures who are capable of photosynthesis. And biology professors, their heads are way out of proportion to their bodies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's another one for you. Why is it that groups of animals behave differently to individuals of the species? Eventually, there is a dog attack, and the scientists handle it because the only doctor in town is busy helping some patient that had an overdose. Can't remember the patient's name now. Carl? Carl, can you hear me? Carl? 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 Take it easy, Carl. Come on. Take it easy, Carl. Oh, maybe Kyle? For a while, they're not sure what's attacking people, but then it becomes obvious that it was definitely just domestic dogs that have started to go crazy. Children, drop your leashes. Leave the dogs alone. Now come with me, slowly. Come on, that's right. Come with me. Stop it! Stop that noise! Get going away! The town people try to get the mayor to call the governor, and he wants to talk about fucking books in the weather. So, once again, women have to take charge. Oh, meditating? Does that stuff work? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes, it's good to talk to you, too. Did you get that book I sent you? The Illustrated Tibetan Book of the Dead. Great. Hello? What's that? Oh, you have a dog? What kind? A mutt. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh, for God's sake. 
It's just that we have a large bunch of dogs that are acting up, and, and uh, that's the long and the short of it. Governor, this is Louise Koppelman. Two people have been killed down here by dogs. Yes. Yes. And a group of kindergarten children and their parents were attacked just this afternoon. Yes. Now, we need some help. Well, I don't know what you're going to do about it, but do something. Overall, way too much talk about science. These dudes just sit there having a dick measuring contest about nothing that anybody cares about. They're fighting over this girl that, for all I know, has no interest in either of them, or maybe both of them. Who cares? They're, you're supposed to be a killer dog movie. I don't care about pheromones and electromagnetic generators. I, who cares to have dogs attack people? That's the point of the movie. Like I said, eventually the women take charge and are like, let's do something, dogs are killing people, and the guys are still just arguing over semantics. Like, no, I wouldn't use the term pheromones, that's unfair. They're not pheromones, they're a different chemical that, shut up, dogs are killing people! Apparently the main guy, the scientist with the long hair, is played by David McCullum from NCIS, who plays Ducky. It looks and sounds nothing like him, but that's what the credits say, so I gotta go with it. Uh, the acting is okay for the script they're given, but the script is just so bad. It's just so much stuff you don't care about. He wants to see a killer dog movie, and that doesn't happen to like the last 10 minutes. Uh, it's directed by Burt Brickenhoff, who made tons of made for TV movies in the 70s. And then moved on to television shows. He did Remington Steel, Scarecrow and Mrs. King, uh, Elf. And then in the 90s, moved on to stuff like Seventh Heaven and Saved by the Bell and Beverly Nine Hills 90210. He directed episodes of all them shows. So he hasn't made anything in over a decade. Probably a good thing. And this is, he's had one other movie other than this in feature films. So, I don't know whatever happened to the guy, but I didn't enjoy this one. Probably for the best they stopped. Thank you for watching, and as always, I shall try to do better next time.